So the story is that if you have an old mechanical camera like this, um, chances are its shutter over time as the springs wear out have just been getting um, more and more inaccurate. Uh, you tend to lose your top speeds and the slow speeds either are really slow or they uh, don't happen at all. And you can take your old camera or shutter or whatever to a camera repair person and they will use like this really sophisticated uh, piece of test equipment to verify what your actual shutter speeds are. But that's for chumps. So there's a few approaches that you could take to do this. Um, the classic do-it-yourself method is to get a light sensor and put it on a pair of wires and then use your computer's sound card as kind of like a hack together oscilloscope. You can basically like make a recording of the sound and then uh, use the sound card or use the recording software to figure out exactly how long the impulse was. But that's way too easy and it doesn't let you make use of your fancy toys. So what we're going to do is shine a laser through the camera and onto this photodiode. And this is really primitive and not very uh, accurate or precise, but um, it's good enough for our purposes. This is ye old um, 555 timer. Um, it's a real classic. It's just an, a semiconductor IC um, that you supply with one capacitor, which you can see there right in the middle, um, kind of obscured by a wire, and you supply it with two resistors, and it outputs a um, periodic signal at a fairly good fixed um, steady rate. So again, the way this is going to work is we've got the laser and it's going to be shining onto the camera shutter and then um, when the camera shutter opens for its instantaneous exposure um, the photodiode will be lit up on the other side and what the Arduino will do is nothing until it notices the photodiode light up and then for the duration that the photodiode is hot it will start counting the pulses from the 555 timer. And the timer is going to kick out 10,000 pulses a second. So if your camera shutter speed was, say, one, at 1 1,000th one of a second, we would expect to register about 10 pulses from the timer during that um, exposure. Uh, the reason that we're using an external timer is because, um, in some cases, it proves to be more accurate than the Arduino's uh, built-in microsecond timing um, function. It's kind of weird, but um, all, if you use your own external timer and attach it as an interrupt and then count the pulses, sometimes you get a better result than if you were just to call the microseconds function directly. We're going to play with the oscilloscope a little. Um, I'll touch the, the probe of the oscilloscope to the output from the timer, and let's see what we get on the graph here. Um, so from this display, you can see horizontally it's taking one, two, three, four, five um, marks on the grid for it to complete an entire pulse. And over here it says, what, 20 microseconds per grid line? So that's 100 microseconds per um, cycle, and that is 10,000 hertz. And just for the heck of it, you can... Um, if we zoom out on the, on the waveform, we can see that it holds pretty much constantly. If you look at the bottom um, bottom lines, even after about a dozen cycles, it still stays pretty dang accurate. So this is probably within um, you know two percent of ten thousand hertz, which is plenty accurate for timing cameras. Okay, let's activate the laser. Okay, and the laser is shining through the lens, and. Here is Mr. Photodiode. So here's one five hundredth of a second. And again. And it just kicks it out over the serial port how many pulses it counted from the timer right here. So 33 and 34. If you do enough of these, um, you can start to build up an actual graph. And for all that trouble, we can see that at about one second, the camera is pretty accurate. But, predictably, as the shutter speeds go up, oh, look at that. It's losing accuracy. So, for that particular lens, its two fastest speeds are actually a little bit slow.